Hey everybody, today I'm going to take a look at this retro arcade I picked up at Five Below for you guessed it, five bucks. It claims to have a hundred exciting games on it and it requires two AAA batteries for ages six and up. Boy, isn't this exciting. It just looks like various forms of Tetris or Tetris pieces or whatever. But nonetheless, I'm going to open this up and see if it works. I know friend of the show, Atari Creep, got one of these a while back and his didn't work. So hopefully it will work. So let's take this out of the package, get some fresh batteries and check out the Retro Arcade. All right, here it is out of the package. Uh, it's kind of lightweight, but not super duper lightweight. So it doesn't feel as cheap as you might expect, but still cheaper than a traditional mini arcade that you get like at Walmart. Here's the little battery compartment. You need a little screwdriver to open it up. There's a speaker on the bottom. So let's see, we have a joystick. We have a reset button to reset your game. Go back to the main menu, a sound button. You press it a few times. You can eventually get it to mute. It might change the volume a little bit, but it was hard for me to tell. A start button, which can also start your game and pause your game. And an A and B button, which from what I understand does the same thing. And here's the on off switch and it does auto shut off, which is kind of nice. can hear that little ode to joy playing. So here we go. So interesting how this kind of screen works. So the joystick pressing up and down gives you a game variation up to 99, which honestly you can't always tell a difference. So I'm not sure what's going on. This does not come with a manual. So you have to kind of figure out what to do yourself. Now pressing right on the joystick changes the speed on the left and pressing up to 10, we'll go to one, and pressing left changes the level on the right. Isn't that kind of backwards? And then pressing the letters go through the alphabet. You could see A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P for all the different game variations. And you'll notice you get a preview window of the game, but a lot of them look the same. So let's start with game A. Game A is like a little shooter. So you move your little spaceship or whatever around and you try and shoot the other guys, but you are one large target. And it's interesting that sometimes that little boy on the corner, when you get hit, he flaps his wings. So there's your score. There's your lives. Those little blocks are your lives. And then, of course, the speed and level. And I don't know that it ever increases. So if you want to go faster, you're going to have to get out of the game and do it yourself. So let's get out of this game. Let's go to game B. B is like a little generic racer. If you ever played Street Racer on the 2600 or an old racer like that, you just press left or right. You can press the button to make yourself go a little bit faster. And that's basically it. Get 100 points for every little car you pass. Oh, and I crashed on purpose. All right, let's go to game C. So game C, I don't know what's going on. So there's four shapes. There's a smiley face. You're supposed to do something, but no matter how I move my joystick or press a button, sometimes he smiles, sometimes he doesn't. So he smiled there. Okay, and I did something there. Now what do I do? Nothing. I don't know. And I made him smile. So I don't know what I'm doing in this game, honestly. If anyone knows, let me know in the comments below. I thought it might be like Simon, but it's not working out that way. All right, D, we got some more shooting action. Except what you're doing here is you hold down the button. I guess you're shooting an invisible death ray, of course, to make all these blocks disappear before they reach you. And that's basically the game. Okay, let's go on to the next game. So we did D, let's do E. E's like Frogger. So imagine that those blanks are like logs or whatever, except you have to move with them. You have to, like, if I just leave my guy here, eventually the log or whatever will will go and I'll, I'll die because I didn't move with them. And this is a very difficult game. I have not made it to the other side yet because I keep get get. oh, I just did. That's a first for me, but it's just very difficult to keep up with these. It's very touchy, as you can see. All right, let's move on. Too bad that that wasn't uh, programmed more like Frogger. That would have been a fun little game. So this game's like that other game that I didn't know, but this one I actually kind of figured out. So you, he shows you a shape. I Wait, I did it. Okay. And then you press the joystick in the direction of the shape, but I don't know why it's not working. These two smiley faces games they don't do much for me but at least i made him happy for a second all right keep going on so we did that one so let's go to g what up g this game is like the other one except now you're shooting shapes and what you're trying to do is make a line think of tetris kind of like tetris before the shapes get to you and once you make a line 
it'll make it it'll make it disappear the line you're on and also anything below that you accidentally drew too much Ooh. so an interesting game very challenging see we did G let's go to H so on this one you press right on the joystick for the right side up for the middle and then left for the left side to change the shape you're you want to match them and then press the button to meet have them meet just like this so one of the most interesting games I think on the unit all right let's go on oh, I paused it on accident so we did F we did G I think I skipped ahead to H did I do H let's go around that's a bummer you can't go backwards you have to go all the way through E F G H that's what I just did I so now we're into Tetris land these are all Tetris style games so you start with just a basic generic Tetris the one the one problem with this Tetris is you can't move it both directions you just go the one direction all the time joystick's not the best I'm hitting it wrong because I'm looking at it through a viewfinder but if if you um do make a Tetris which I'll do here in a second ah joystick does not work well in a viewfinder as I said but if you do make one and you leave pieces hanging they'll just hang in the air so they won't you know like other forms of Tetris if you if the pieces are dangling they'll drop down not so much here and I'm doing terrible because it did not work well let's try this again and this this variation I did a variation and it added some pieces and they're hanging the in the air too and honestly despite how I'm doing right here it plays okay for what it is the joystick like I said isn't the best but it's because I'm playing through the viewfinder that I'm having trouble well that one dropped to pieces sometimes they drop sometimes they don't so maybe it's dependent on the game variation But I did have one where the pieces did not drop. But apparently this is not the one. So for Tetris, it's okay. So, but there's now there's the rest of them. They're just variations on Tetris. And I can't always tell what they're doing differently. There is one. Let's see if this is the one. Yeah, this is one where after you drop your piece, the screen mo moves over a little bit. To the left and it just wraps around so pieces will eventually come back from the other side so they don't disappear but they do kind of go away for a second oh and you can see right th oh no not right there wait I pressed over so the joystick is okay but not again playing through the viewfinder not the greatest and see and now some they added some pieces Oh, that's what's going on. So I'm accidentally hitting up. And hitting up also drops your piece. So that's what's happening. Playing through the viewfinder, I'm accidentally not I'm hit I'm I hit up and that's why my piece dropped. So up and down drops your piece in this version. And this one, look at I'm just going through pieces not rotating so there it's another variation on Tetris and that's all that is left on this machine is a bunch of variations on Tetris there's some where there's a few pieces in the middle sometimes like I said the whole puzzle will rotate over one space to the left after you drop so in this one the pieces don't rotate they change they just flat out change so you know for five bucks is this the worst thing ever absolutely not it's actually kind of impressive for five dollars to be honest with you if I was stuck alone, you know, somewhere without electricity or my smartphone, and I just had this to occupy myself for 20 minutes or so, it might work. And it might work for some kids, again, if they have nothing else. But personally, I have so many other options as far as gaming going, including portable gaming, that it's not something I see myself playing a lot. But for $5, I don't think it's terrible, so, which I think is the best you can say, assuming you can find one which, which works, which, you know, that's what happened with mine. I bought it at five below works just fine for me so there you go it's a five dollar mini retro arcade with 100 exciting games that part's kind of a little bit misleading it's more like a couple dozen maybe and they're not all that exciting but you know five bu bucks 
I guess it's okay. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Click like and subscribe. Support the show on uh, Patreon. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And I will see you next time on the next Nosewear Gamer video.